Hey guys welcome, so in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto sent to MHA universe to get quirks to save his village from attack, this is part 1 and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe let's get in this video. Konoha was bubbling with life even in the night time as the villagers made preparations for the annual Rinne festival coming up the next day. Naruto was the most excited, he had found a scarf his late mother had knitted for him at Konohamaru's house when the little ninja invited him to over after spring cleaning. To say Naruto was happy was an understatement, words couldn't describe his joy that he nearly wept in front of his protege. His girlfriend, Hinata who had also made him a scarf was a little jealous, thinking it was from one of his fangirls since the blonde-haired ninja had become so popular lately. She was relieved and happy for Naruto when she heard it was a gift from his mother. So she refused to let Naruto take off his mother's scarf so he could wear hers. Sasuke had returned to the village for a short while and it was saddening for Konoha 12 plus Sai to hear that he wouldn't be available for the festival and will be leaving tonight after their meeting at barbecue. Though Sasuke had had such a horrible past with them, they were ready to forgive him and received him with open arms after the war. The group chatted and caught up with each other since now they were full-fledged ninja and didn't have enough time to meet like this and catch up. And then, Sai held back the beast boar with his painted warriors while I prepared my new Rasengan. Naruto excitedly narrated. Wait, you have a new Rasengan? Ino asked clearly surprised. Don't you ever get tired? What? There's room for improvement. Naruto shrugged. Keep this up, and the next generation will never surpass us. Shikamaru said jokingly but with a hint of sincerity. They had all gotten stronger and more responsible since the war ended. With Choji, Ino and Shikamaru as new clan heads, Sasuke as the shadow to the Hoka guy, Naruto as an Hoka guy candidate, Sakura as the new leader of the medical nin, Sai as the new leader of the Anbu Black Ops, Tenten as the weapons specialist for the nin corps, Li and Kiba in the police corps, Shino teaching at the academy and Hinata an advisor to her sister, and head of the Hyuga clan. Everybody had something going on in their lives. As for relationships, Naruto and Hinata were now engaged and had a wedding date set. Everyone couldn't believe it when Naruto and Hinata walked into barbecue hand in hand. They were also happy that the knucklehead finally got it. They had wondered why he never seemed to have feelings for the Hyuga. It was good they went on that mission. Hours later, the group seemed fizzed out so everyone called it a night. Kiba had drank too much so Shino reluctantly had to take the sheriff to his house. It was left with Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura and Hinata as they looked on and bid their friends goodbye. Hinata smiled and turned in the direction of her home. Thanks, guys. It was nice to meet with everyone again, I'll see you tomorrow. Oi oi, wait up, I'm walking you home. Naruto grinned and took Hinata's soft small hands in his causing the blue net to blush the opposite of her hair color. Sakura looked up to Sasuke a bit sadly and sighed. So, this is where you leave right? Sasuke eyed her sadly but smiled and poked her forehead, making her pout but blush still. Thank you for everything, he said with a sincere smile. Sakura was the only person who understood why Sasuke kept thanking her and mirrored his smile instead of getting annoyed. The next thing he said surprised her a bit. You. Want me to walk you home. It came out more as a suggestion than an appeal and Sakura gladly accepted. They were at her doorstep minutes later after walking in comfortable silence. Sakura turned to face Sasuke who was already in front of her. Sakura couldn't recognize the look in his eyes and he was already inches close to her. Without warning, he leaned in and pressed his lips against Sakura's, taking her by surprise. Her cheeks flared up with heat and her eyes flew open when he wrapped his one arm around her waist to pull her close to himself. It took little time for her to melt into the kiss. She had never expected Sasuke's lips to be so soft or that he would be a good kisser. Had he ever kissed before? She quickly cleared those thoughts when he pressed her back against her door, tilting his head as he took the kiss a little further. All of sudden, a surge of sinister chakra ran through his body making him jerk and flinch from the kiss. He panted, face red from the sensation still lingering within his being but the chakra he just felt, was so familiar. Sakura didn't seem offended by his actions, she must have felt it too. Guess his work wasn't yet done. Go. Her voice brought him back to reality and he saw that he still had her pinned to the door. 
he released her and gave her a look of appreciation before speeding off in a flash. Naruto was shielding Hinata with one of his arms, her Byakugan was activated as she stared at the otherworldly creature. Its white pale eyes changing from a Byakugan to a yellow Rinnegan. Villagers fled the scene in panic leaving only Naruto and Hinata. You inferior creatures, using our powers to your advantage. It said in a hoarse voice. You disgust me. You're the one who's disgusting after trying to take another life. Naruto retorted and the Atsusuki just smirked. The Nine Tails Chakra is mine. I belong to no one. Kurama flared up from within Naruto. Calm down, Kurama Naruto chided the tailed beast. In a flash, the Atsusuki neared Naruto with a chakra rod and attempted to impale him but was stopped by a yellow hand from Naruto's body even though Naruto wasn't paying attention. Instead of feeling intimidated, the Atsusuki's smirk widened as it dug the rod into the hand causing Naruto to send him flying with another. Hinata, please get back. Before he could finish talking to Hinata, the Atsusuki grabbed Naruto by the head and pulled him along the earth with him as he flew out of the village. Naruto. Hinata screamed. Bright yellow tails sprung out of Naruto and planted on the ground stopping the alien from pulling him further. So stubborn. The Atsusuki griped as Naruto stood on his feet, his appearance changing from normal to bright yellow. Soon a blue flash stopped by Naruto and the Sasuke unsheathed his sword. Looks like you couldn't just sit tight in your own world, Sasuke said with a hardened gaze at the Atsusuki. You just had to follow me back here. The Atsusuki's eyes bore into Sasuke's and it gritted its teeth. You. It pointed at Sasuke. You'll pay for what you did to me back then I still haven't forgotten and I'm going to take that Rinnegan and the Nine Tails Chakra. It said and licked its lips with a sadistic smile on its face. Don't go easy on, I am. As all Sasuke said to Naruto as his perfect Suzano cloaked him and took him high into the sky. Yeah. Naruto responded also cloaking himself in the Kyuubi's form. The Atsusuki just smiled menacingly and engaged them in battle. Several minutes into the battle, Naruto and Sasuke seemed to be holding strong against the alien as they had him in a weakened state. Drawing near to him in his Suzano form, Sasuke attempted to strike him dead but stopped midway when he saw that the Atsusuki had tricked them. It had flashed away from Sasuke's view into Naruto. Using gentle fist on his abdomen where the seal is. Naruto started to glow red and his eyes changed shape, the air around suddenly became hot and the Atsusuki smirked in victory. His celebration however, was cut short when the rampaging Naruto held him by the throat, burning the alien's skin in the process. The Atsusuki managed to slip away but ran into Sasuke who attempted to attack him but he palm struck his left eye causing Sasuke to recoil. My Rinnegan. He laid a hand on his now dull Rinnegan. A roar from his far right caused him to grit his teeth in annoyance at the Atsusuki. Naruto. Naruto was rampaging, the alien must have somehow used his gentle fist to manipulate the nine tails and make him go on rampage. Sasuke watched as Naruto took hold of the alien and destroyed his body again and again eventually killing him. Naruto roared before speeding off to the direction of the village. Sasuke's eyes widened as he remembered that Naruto was never himself in this state. He managed to follow Naruto behind and match his speed. They got to the village in no time and the villagers ran frantically at the fearsome sight of Naruto. Sitting still, he gathered Chakra to form a Bijudama he wished to shoot at the village. The ball of energy grew bigger and bigger and the villagers screamed and called for help. Hinata stood feet away. Naruto. The beast decided to aim at her but stopped mid-shot. The energy ball crumbling like earth. Behind him, Sasuke's right eye shone red with the Mangeku Sharingan as he struggled to manipulate Naruto to calm down. The beast, however, did not fall prey to Sasuke's Sharingan and managed to break free. Sasuke, already seeming to know the inevitable outcome, summoned the last reaming strength in his Rinnegan and a portal appeared behind Naruto distracting him a bit giving Sasuke the chance to spear him and Naruto into the portal. Sakura who had watched as the portal closed. A tear slipped down her cheeks. She knew Sasuke would do anything for the village and he just proved his loyalty. Sasuke couldn't tell what he was seeing as he laid on the ground. Everything blurred and all he could hear was the faint sound of sirens. He was worn out and his shoulders and neck stung from being burnt by Naruto's cloak after he speared him. Panting softly he managed to turn his head to where the action seemed to be taking place. 
he could faintly see Naruto still in Rampage State tearing down the area and fighting against some supernatural individuals. Sasuke didn't seem to care that they had inordinate abilities, he just knew that they didn't have any sort of power that could restrain him. He was the only one and it looked like they weren't even getting anywhere with it. What sort of quirk is this? A hero wondered out loud as he held his burnt arm. The atmosphere around it is so hot and stings the eye, and if you touch it, you burn. A hero with a force field quirk immediately jumped in to save his partners when Naruto struck the ground and created a huge crater and created a massive shockwave. A hearty laughter filled the air as a huge muscular man in a costume landed right in front of Naruto. There is no reason to worry, why? The man spoke confidently as Naruto growled at him before the hero took an attack stance and grinned because I am here. Sasuke watched as he punched nothing in particular but created a massive shockwave with wind pressure blasting Naruto feet away. He sped after Naruto not seeming to give him time to recover. Sasuke became worried, he placed his one hand beside him as he struggled to push himself up. I need to stop this before it's too late. The hero known as All Might engaged Naruto in a fist fight. Punching Naruto repeatedly though his skin burnt in the process. What kind of a quirk is this? While he questioned in his thoughts. Naruto caught both his fists and pushed him into ground in order to crush him. All Might grinned even more, despite the burn and pushed back at Naruto. They stayed in a lock, the ground beneath All Might cracking up. He pushed against Naruto finally succeeding to raise his hands a little when another set of red hands came up behind Naruto to and pummeled All Might into the ground. Naruto roared and prepared a bijudama to ire at All Might. The legendary hero watched the ball of energy grow bigger and bigger before seeing himself in far-off location and another man in his former position. Sasuke readied his right eye, using the mangeku to hold Naruto even for a second and then shot Amaterasu at him. That was it for him, with his chakra drained, he fell to the floor as Naruto screamed. He hoped it would work knowing how Naruto himself could easily wave off the black flames but the Kantius scream and the dramatic change in tone of voice assured Sasuke that it worked. He felt a thud right by his side and he knew Naruto was free. Sorry, Naruto. He his eyelids finally dropped. All Might had watched the whole scene unfold in shock, surprise and confusion. Now in his normal state, he stared with interest at the two sleeping bodies of the young adults that had just arrived their city dramatically, giving them another thing to worry about. Where did they come from, what were their quirks and how did they get here? There was so much he wanted to ask them and he couldn't wait for them to wake up. A sigh brought him about of his thoughts and he turned to the door to see the ever-tired face of Shota Aizawa. It's just one after the other. First the all-for-one attack and now this. Toshinori just looked on at the two young ones sleeping peacefully. The dark-haired one had minor injuries than the blonde one. That one had broken bones and most of all, was his peeled skin well it was peeled before he supernaturally started to heal himself. Recovery girl was beyond spooked at the wonder and was more shocked to see that his bones had also healed. He must have such immense stamina and energy to do this kind of stuff, is what he remembered her saying in Abada aside, Toshinori knew she was being serious. None of the boys gave off any evil or sinister vibe, even though one of them nearly destroyed the whole city. The other one saved him and he seemed to want to save the other one too from the way he attacked him. Could it be that, the blonde lost control of his quirk? Oh, how he wished they would wake up so he could ask them questions. As if granting his wish, both of them stirred awake. The blonde one waking up first, blue eyes lazily looking around as he played there, his eyes landed on Toshinori briefly before he blinked in confusion and sat up. Toshinori could see Aizawa tense up beside him and raised an arm to hold him back. Naruto looked at Sasuke who was stirring awake and his eyes widened. A memory flash of him rampaging hit his eyes and he jumped off his bed over to Sasuke's. Aizawa went along with restraining Naruto with his braces and activating his quirk. Aizawa. Toshinori called out to him. Naruto started to breathe heavy breaths. And he struggled to raise his bound hands. Who the hell are you? He roared in anger as his eyes changed color and the atmosphere became humid. Naruto easily tugged on Aizawa's brace, almost sending him out the window but instead of Aizawa to meet glass, he was held safely by the same boy, except now his countenance had changed and the atmosphere went back to normal. As he stood properly, he could see that there was another one of him standing near the bed panting and sweating. 
I, I'm sorry. Naruto said softly as he dispelled the shadow clone. Aizawa continued to stare at him evenly. He saw how he looked at his friend with worry and started to feel bad for jumping to conclusions. Sighing, he made a move to speaking but was cut off. Please, tell me I didn't hurt anyone. He said softly. Toshinori smiled, happy that his discernment of the boys was accurate. He wanted to speak to comfort the boy but Aizawa beat him to it. Yes, you put 15 of our heroes in the hospital and I'm sure three of them won't get to work again due to their injuries. Toshinori watched as the blonde gulped and looked away. So I did hurt people. He sighed. I'm really sorry. Aizawa was a bit put off by his apologetic behavior but he knew better than to not anger the boy again. It seemed his quirk didn't work on him but he would keep that to himself for now. The other boy who had already been starring awake sat up slowly. It's fine, young one. They have successfully carried out their duties as heroes, that's what's important. Toshinori said causing Naruto to chuckle. Huh. Someone I know once told me something like that. Naruto answered earning a smile from Toshinori. He watched with a small smile as the blonde boy beamed at the recovery of his friend. Sasuke, you're alive. Sasuke's eyes lazily rolled to Naruto's side before he sighed, observed his surroundings for a few moments before looking at the two strange-looking men in front of him. Great. Sasuke. He could feel Naruto's shirtless form hug him and he freaked out, slapping Naruto so he's flying across the room. What was that for, Tem? Just shut up and suck it up, Yujura Tonkashi. Hey, I was just being grateful for not killing you. Sasuke scoffed. You couldn't kill me if you tried. What was that? Toshinori and Aizawa watched the two argue for a while. Don't these two remind you of some other two we know? Aizawa couldn't help but look amused and nodded. When the arguing got too much Aizawa called to their attention. Naruto who was the first to look his way got freaked out by his eyes, not because of the quirk heck he didn't know what it was but because of the dryness and how red and gravely it looked. H hey, I'm sorry. We'll stop. Aizawa looked at Sasuke who didn't seem too bothered by what was going on. You, if you're going to ask me about where I come from, Sasuke cut him off in a smug tone causing the room to get tense. I'll tell you. Huh. Practically everyone in the room exclaimed. Naruto thought Sasuke wasn't going to reveal anything to them and Aizawa thought he would have to force it out of the boy. He looked at Sasuke for a moment and noticed for the first time that his left eyes was purple, sclera and all with a ripple pattern on it. I'm just gonna say it simply, I'm not from this world, you could say I'm from another. Dimension. Aizawa and Toshinori weren't shocked, they lived in a world where time travel and all sorts of things like this were possible and it seemed like his world wasn't different either. We ran into a problem that forced me to teleport here to save my village, I didn't have a particular target or destination in mind which explains the reason why we ended up here, causing you and your people a lot of trouble. I apologize. It's a good thing, you two ended up where there was civilization, you would have died. Toshinori said making the dark-haired boy nod. I agree with you, thank you for your hospitality. This is a really different side of you I'm seeing, Sasuke. Naruto teased at how surprisingly polite Sasuke was being. Just shut up, loser. The two went into bickering again and Toshinori had a bright idea after watching them argue fondly. Hi, Aizawa. I want to do something. I already know. Aizawa responded surprising the symbol of peace. I was thinking the same thing too, but there are also risks. But this is the only way. Toshinori said. I see something in them that can help instill courage back in our students, something that we are failing to do. Toshinori looked at his calloused hands remembering that he can't be the symbol of peace anymore. He'd only try in dire moments. Jumping in to fight Naruto was one of them. He was yet to announce his retirement and with all for one subordinates on the loose, this was the best solution. We need them in Ua. Aizawa just watched the two inside, calling their attention. What are your names, young ones? The blonde one was the first to answer. With a grin that could rival the shine of that sun and his thumb jerked at his chest he said his name. Orwa, Uzumaki Naruto da. He then looked straight at Aizawa and Toshinori. And I'm gonna be Hoka guy, believe it. The two heroes smirked at the blonde's bright attitude. They didn't know what an Hoka guy was, but they knew it was a pretty lofty dream. I'm Uchiha Sasuke, and I happen to be responsible for this loser. 
Naruto who had started to lazily rub his neck immediately snapped his head in Sasuke's direction with an agitated look. Hey, young Naruto, young Sasuke. Toshinori called out to them before they could start arguing again. The seriousness of his countenance caused the two boys to pay attention to him. Once he was sure he had their attention, he spoke, we would like to make a request. Staying in the dorms had made it easier for Izuku to get to school right on time. Unlike before, he'd find it hard to get a bus and would end up getting there when Aizawa-sensei was already in class. He dreaded the moments where Aizawa would punish him. Swiping the thought off, he continued to go through his notes while his classmates chatted happily, trying to make the boring morning interesting at least. Izuku could not help but filter into their conversations, they sounded happy, but he knew deep down they all felt the same way he did. A lot had happened since Bakugo's kidnapping and all for one attack. He had witnessed the power of All Might's archenemy and that was the worst experience of his life. It had made him wonder how All Might could smile and fight people like him. In fact, his admiration for him skyrocketed. Izuku now knew he had a very long way to go. He was happy that All Might still lived, but sad that he had to retire. Because he couldn't do anything about it. It bothered Izuku to his core, made him sick in the stomach. Bakugo felt the same way, he made it clear during their infamous battle at Ground Beta. He was glad they fought, though. Now Bakugo had been on the calmer side towards him. He was still aggressive, but it had reduced to a certain level. He looked up at the shadow that loomed over his notes and met Ochako's gaze. Hey, she said softly with a small smile already having an idea too of what her curly-haired crush was thinking about. It's fine, you did your best. Izuku just sighed and smiled back at the brunette. I know, but I'm not worried. You should know by now that lying to me is just pointless. She shook her head at him. It's literally written all over your face. I'm just happy Kachan and I aren't on suspension anymore. He laughed, trying to lighten the atmosphere between them. I mean, Aizawa sensei was Ruth Waite. Izuku sat up and looked at his watch, it was already 8.15 and their homeroom teacher wasn't here. Did something happen? What's wrong? Ochako asked curious at his actions. Aizawa sensei has not arrived at the stipulated time. Tenya blared from behind the classroom while angling his arms like a robot. Tenya's sudden appearance caused Izuku, Ochako and the rest of the class nearly jump out of their skins. So noisy Tokiami said in a flat tone but with bitterness etched in it. Hey, damn four eyes calm the hell down. Bakugo glared at the class representative as the class went into an uproar, either for their missing sensei or Tenya's alarming nature. While they bickered and got rowdy, Aizawa walked in with Principal Nezu and two boys. They all looked at the students with deadpan expressions. Naruto just expressed amusement. This takes me way back. Aizawa's eyes twitched, they had been standing there and none of the students had noticed. Sighing, he activated his quirk. Oi. He called out in his scary stern voice causing the class to turn slowly in their direction in fear. His hair was flying around and his eyes shone crimson as he stared them down. Naruto smiled at how intimidated the students seemed to be by his gaze. It reminded him of Captain Yamato's scary stare. The students slowly found their way to their seats feeling uneasy. Once the class was settled, Aizawa let out another sigh before deactivating his quirk. Good grief, you guys. Stop making me use my quirk or I'll expel you all. Yes, Aizawa-sensei. The class squeaked in unison. Now, now, Aizawa-sensei. Let them have this chance to blow off some steam. He said as he climbed onto the teacher's desk. He gave Aizawa a knowing look. They have been through a lot, lately. Izuku sat there and noticed for the first time that there were two new persons wearing the school's uniform. They seemed to be older than most of the students maybe two years older, he wondered if they were the reasons why Aizawa's sensei was late and most importantly, Principal Nezu was here. He noticed that the blonde one had started to look at him and he quickly looked away in embarrassment, he must have been starring too long. Anyway, we don't want to waste any more of your class time so we'll go straight to what we came here for. Nezu addressed the class before shifting his attention to the two tall boys facing the class. Class 1A, these two young men are going to be your new classmates starting today. Well that explains the two new empty seats Bakugo said smugly as he looked over at the two seats at the back. 
Tenya raised an over-enthusiastic arm to which Principal Nezu responded to. Sir, how come the new students arrive now? Weren't they supposed to participate in the entrance exam just like the rest of us? Lita Kun, Izuku said in a hushed tone, embarrassed at Tenya's behavior. Naruto and Sasuke's faces sterned at the glass-eyed boy's question but it softened nonetheless, they could understand that the whole class felt that way and this one was just bold enough to speak for all of them. Flashback. Naruto had not expected them to bow and he freaked out. H. Hey. We really need your help, please. All Might begged after dispelling his hero form. Naruto who wasn't comfortable with their bowed positions blushed profusely and beckoned on them to raise their heads. Once everyone had raised their heads, he sighed and looked Sasuke's way. He looked like he was thinking deeply about it as he usually would. He patiently waited for him to speak. We'll help, Sasuke said smugly, causing everyone in the room to gasp in elation. Toshinori sighed in relief. Thank you. Aizawa however, gave Sasuke a knowing look. They had just met for five hours and the dry-eyed man practically knew Sasuke. He had not expected him to agree to this, he was the type that didn't like to get involved in things that were none of his business. Hey, it's not like I have much of a choice. The fight Naruto and I had earlier dulled the power of my Rinnegan temporarily, so I won't be able to us my teleportation technique for two weeks. He explained and gave Naruto a side glance. And, if that wasn't so, he'd just talk me into agreeing with you since I know he is already in on this now. Naruto refused to be surprised, that was just how Sasuke was. Flashback end. They didn't take the entrance exam and don't need to anyway. Nezu said in his usual happy tone causing the class to erupt in murmurs. Hey, how come they don't need to take the exam? Bakugo asked as his gaze hardened in their direction. What makes them so special? Did you watch the news yesterday? Aizawa asked. Yeah. It was about some monster that nearly destroyed the city and took out most of the pros and some cool guy stopped it Denki rambled carelessly before catching himself and realizing it with everyone, though his was late as usual. Are they? But how come they're here, didn't they have something to do with that? Sue asked eliciting more murmurs in the classroom but they all quieted down when they heard a small laugh. Naruto grinned sheepishly as he rubbed the back of his head. About that, I'm really sorry. I lost control back there, but being here is how I can repay you for all the damage I caused, Datbeo. That was the first time they had heard his voice. It sounded boyish, like it sounded a little younger than he looked and the little verbal tick he added at the end of his apology had got the girls blushing over him. He's so cute. His eyes are so blue. His smile is pretty bright. Are those whiskers, anyway scratch that they are cute. Anyway, I'm Uzumaki Naruto. It's going to be a pleasure working with you all, Datbeo. He grinned giving them a thumb up before turning to Sasuke. Come on, Sasuke introduce yourself. The Ravenet looked up at the class with a blank expression. Uchiha Sasuke. The girls went gushing over him and he looked away, however, as he turned, only Izuku, Bakugo and Todoroki managed to catch a glimpse of the eye that was covered by his side bang. What the heck was that? Bakugo questioned in his head. He watched the two intensely as they walked to their seats. Once they had taken their seats and Principal Nezu had left them, Aizawa brought out the U.S. sportswear. With his infamous smile, he looked especially towards the newbies. Now, why don't we try this again? Naruto and Sasuke frowned. This guy. Sneaky bastard. Naruto thought as he smiled bitterly. There's no escaping this guy, is there? I don't think so. He's using his position as our sensei so he can impose his rules on us. Sasuke leaned his head on his one hand that was propped up on the table. And most importantly, Aizawa looked at Naruto and Sasuke specifically, giving them a sinister smile. You know, this also includes you too. Aizawa had been trying to get them to use their abilities out of curiosity due to seeing a few of it in action. He already knew that Naruto possessed a monstrous energy and strength and that he could make clones of himself. Sasuke hand mentioned having an eye ability to the League of Heroes and he couldn't help but get more interested. Raising the sports attire in front of the class still looking at Naruto and Sasuke he said, this would be a great opportunity to get along with your new classmates. Sasuke scoffed as everyone in class stood to go change for sports. 
If Naruto remembered All Might's description of his apprentice correctly, then the boy with green curly hair and freckles on his face was surely the one. Naruto wasted no time in approaching him. Izuku was busy studying the notes he had made on controlling one for all more on his legs than arms before he felt another presence by him. He looked up and saw that Naruto was looking into his notes with interest but it was a bit startling for him to see the blonde boy up close. He squeaked and jerked away, nearly loosing his footing. However, he was able to maintain balance. Naruto smiled apologetically. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you, Dadbeo. He was amused by the boy's flustered nature. Kind of reminded him of Hinata. He thought, fondly. Aya 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 aya, it's fine. Izuku stuttered as he started looking anywhere but at Naruto animatedly. Okay then, you're Izuku Midoriya, right? Izuku was a little surprised that Naruto knew his full name. Had he gotten that popular already? Yeah but, how do know my name? Someone told me. Naruto said smugly and put his hands in his pockets before he grinned. It's gonna be a pleasure working with ya, Deku. Izuku smiled back at him, already feeling comfortable around the tall blonde. Hi, Uzumaki-san. Oi, just Naruto is okay. Oh oh, sorry. Uzumaki-kun, I hope you get used to the school system as soon as possible. Lita said appearing out of nowhere. Naruto alone jerked save Izuku who was now used to the class rep's consistent pop-ups. Oh okay. Jeez you nearly gave me a heart attack, Dadbeo. Uzumaki-kun. Lita now said quietly in a serious tone. I saw the greatness of your power which was available for all to see on the news. I haven't seen a quirk as powerful as that since Midoriya-kun and the legendary All Might. The air around tensed as Lita adjusted his glasses. Pardon me but may I ask, just how powerful are you? Naruto gulped a little. You said you went out of control, right? Does that happen often? Hey, Lita-kun. Izuku tried to chide him. W well. You'll find out as time passes. Sasuke was suddenly at their side making Naruto sigh in relief. He thanked Sasuke in his head and watched as he responded to Lita. He's been through a lot since that time, give him a break. You're scaring him a bit. Lita blinked in realization and suddenly had a sincere apologetic look on his face. I apologize. I must have gotten too carried away. Naruto just laughed a small laugh and waved him off while far off, Katsuki Bakugo stared intensely at the two new characters. Get ready, we're about to start. Aizawa commanded the students as they assembled in front of him. He held up his distance reading device looking a little enthusiastic which confused the students greatly. Let's see how much you've all improved. He looked at Naruto and Sasuke. And according to tradition, we'll let the newbies go first. We never had that sort of tradition. Jiro deadpanned. Well we do now. He smiled and tossed the ball to Sasuke who caught it easily with his one arm. This was the first time the whole class noticed. Naruto had a bandaged arm while Sasuke had only one arm. Were they really that dense to not notice? Sasuke held the ball in his hand and walked over to where Aizawa had shown him. So I'm just supposed to throw this. Yes, and make use of your quirk. HN. Sasuke scoffed and got ready to toss the ball. Building chakra in his arms, he tossed the ball and watched it disappear into the blue sky. The smile on Aizawa's face indicated his excitement as he looked at the result on the device's screen. The students gasped at the result as it read, 1680. 349. Izuku looked like his eyes would roll out of their sockets, Bakugo froze in his position and Shoto paled while his mouth hung open. That's. That's more than a mile. Tenya muttered. Naruto smirked. Oi, Sasuke, you didn't use your full power on purpose, did ya, Dadbeo? And why will I do that? He quipped. Are you kidding, that's not even his full power. Kirishima looked like he was going to burst. Bakugo's fist balled and his knuckles crunched as he growled. Hey, it's my turn next. Naruto took hold of his own ball. I'm going to score even higher than you, Dadbeo. Yeah, but you'll have to go full force to beat me, loser. Sasuke Tem. Don't start now. Just throw the ball, Naruto. Aizawa groaned not ready to put up with their bickering. All right, let's. He got in position before tossing the ball into the air causing great wind pressure to trail behind the ball and dance around the marking he stood at. Do this. 
The students covered up their eyes and faces as the wind forced a lot of dust up. Once the dust cleared up, Naruto stood grinning. How was that? Aizawa held up the device now reading 2003. 499. Ha. I beat you without using full power, Tem. Sasuke just scoffed and looked away. Don't get cocky. Hey. I'll go next. An angry voice barked from the crowd of dazed students. Bakugo came forward marching confidently with a ball in hand. Out of the way. He pushed Naruto aside and stood on the marking. I'm gonna kill each and every one of you. He said in a grave tone. Startling Naruto for a bit before he looked at Sasuke, his expression neutral. Bakugo got into position and tossed the ball using his explosion quirk to propel it. Die. Naruto's expression stunned. Die. He did not see that coming and when Bakugo started roaring he couldn't help but feel pumped up. Hey, this kid. Aizawa showed the result of the throw being 909. 750. The rest of the class eagerly filed in after to have a turn at throwing the softball. They seemed to be motivated by Naruto and Sasuke's earlier throws and Bakugo's that happened to reach a great height after them. The dry-eyed man smiled to himself. I hate to admit it but. You were right, Toshinori. After school, the students retired to their rooms at the dorm. Naruto and Sasuke were assigned rooms opposite each other. They had gotten a new set of clothes and Naruto had made sure to specify his exact color taste. Sasuke had to secretly step in and do a little compromise with Naruto's clothes. He was sure the idiot would still like it. He was currently walking in the hallway in his black joggers and orange hoodie while eating at a popsicle stick that All Might had brought for him. He had dropped by and had a long talk with Naruto, thanking him for accepting his request to watch over his successor. He had told Naruto not to tell Midoriya about their conversation, his requester that they had met. He wanted to know why but decided to let it be since it was All Might talking. He had only known the guy for a day and he already had a place in his heart. He reminded him so much of Jiraiya minus the perverted part. He told Naruto that his arrival was a blessing in disguise, though Naruto still didn't know what old man Toshinori saw in him. He still felt guilty for hurting those heroes, it reminded him of his past and what this same thing had led to. He'd have to do something about it. He did want to get that kind of hate and distrust pointed towards him because of his lack of control over the Kyuubi. Speaking of Kyuubi, he hadn't heard from Kurama ever since they got here. What had happened to the Great Fox? Was he sick or something? Entering into his subconscious, he found that Kurama was all right and well but his countenance said otherwise. Kurama. Naruto called out softly to the spirit fox who looked straight at Naruto with sorrow in his eyes. Naruto. Naruto neared him and stroked his whiskers before they touched foreheads. Kurama, what's bothering you? The tailed beast sighed and sat up straight before gazing at the blonde ninja. I have felt nothing but guilt ever since we got here. Guilt. Naruto was confused at first but then. Is it because? The beast's silence answered his question in the affirmative. Naruto didn't know Kurama had felt this way. He knew he felt bad about killing his parents and destroying the village leading to the hatred from all the villagers and his loneliness. He must have been beyond scared after finding out what he had done while under the technique. If I had just been more alert, I'm sure I would have been able to shake off that technique. Kurama muttered bitterly to himself. I am a monster after all. Don't say that, Kurama. Naruto snapped. Remember, you are Kurama, the legendary nine-tailed fox, the strongest of all, tailed beasts. He argued. And most importantly, you care about your siblings and will do anything to protect them. And you are the partner of a ninja of the village hidden in the leaves. Kurama's gaze softened as he watched the boy who practically saved his life ramble on and on. He was so lucky to have a Jinchuriki as he is. You're not a monster, Kurama. Don't blame yourself for something that isn't your fault. Naruto looked straight into the beast's eyes with confidence before grinning. Besides, even though people end up hating us, at least we still got each other. That's what friends are for. That last part caused Kurama's eyes to widen in surprise. Naruto hadn't up front called him a friend before. He looked down to see Naruto's hand raised for a fist bump. The, tailed beast shook his head at Naruto with a small smile before grinning and fist bumping him. You're never going to change, are you, Naruto? Naruto found himself in front of class 1A students who were busy chatting up with each other. This must be the common room. 
He stood there, sucking on his popsicle while observing the teenagers. It took more than a minute before one of them noticed he was standing there. Yohi said with a small wave. The group was quiet before Tenya literally robot marched toward him and took his hand. Uzumaki-kun, you are now a student of Ua, so you must join us in the common room. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Naruto hissed as he tried to not lose his footing while Tenya pulled him. He was however, grateful that Tenya had at least accepted him. He sat on one of the couches as the students moved over to him curiously. Uzumaki-kun, I'm so glad you're in our class. Ishido said with a grin. I'm Ishido. I'm Kirishima. The redhead grinned while jerking his thumb to himself. Your quirk during sports was very manly. Oh, thank you, Dadbeo. Naruto was a bit surprised at all the attention he was getting and he started to get a bit shy with his answers which was unlike him. This also happened a lot in Konoha when his fans saw him. I'm Mineta. A short boy with weird hair jumped right in front of him startling Naruto a bit. The boy grinned slyly. You're a bit jumpy are you a pervert too? You were distracting yourself with lewd images, I like your type. Naruto nearly had a nose bleed as he blushed profusely. I I stopped when I was 16, Dadbeo. He blurted causing the girls to frown deeply at him. He moved his hands in a patting motion at them with a nervous smile. I don't do it anymore, I swear. I believe, I am. Denki said smugly as he made his way in front Naruto picking Mineta up like he only weighed 4 pounds. You're all grown up and mature enough to not do those kinda of stuff anymore. That's true, Denki's right. If Naruto was a pervert he definitely had used the chance to join Mineta in trying to peek at us while we changed for sports. Ochako agreed causing everyone to follow suit. Thanks. Naruto sighed in relief while Denki grinned and gave him a thumbs up. No prob, we're yellow heads so we gotta look out for each other, right? Naruto smiled feeling happiness wash over him. He hadn't felt that way since Aruka had said he was like a little brother to him. Closing his eyes he nodded and leaned his head in his palms. Yeah. I'm Ochako Uraraka nice to meet you. She drew out her hand in a handshake and Naruto received it. I'm Yaoyorozu Momo, it's going to be a pleasure working with you. She said with a serious but friendly look on. I'm Jiro. The earphone Jack Hero said smugly. Her hair made Naruto smile, it looked like young Hinata's hairstyle. I like your hair. He grinned and she blushed. T thank you. Next was Toru. Naruto was a bit shocked that someone had invisibility as a quirk. That was a very dangerous quirk. He'd have to keep sage mode on at all times. He let her know what he was thinking which flattered her greatly. The rest of the students present introduced themselves before it was Sue's turn. I'm Suyu Asui, but you can call me Sue. The frog girl said to Naruto. Ah, nice to meet you. Likewise, say, Naruto you've never been to or heard of Musudafu, have you? Naruto immediately started to put his guard up. Yeah, I live pretty far away. He and Sasuke had told the higher-ups and the Hero League of who they were and where they come from. They made sure not to reveal too much, leaving it as two guys from another dimension who protect a certain village. Sasuke felt telling them that little was alright since they had caused a lot of damage. The higher-ups were more than okay with them not revealing too much so they instructed them not to spill details of their origin to the students. The only thing they won't be able to hide from them, is their power. Naruto stared evenly at the frog quirk girl. Okay, but I have to ask, how come you weren't arrested for what you and your friend did back then? Naruto's heart skipped, the air tensed and everyone in the room gave Sue pointed stares, trying to get her to stop but Sue was just starting. Even though you lost control of your quirk, and you didn't get arrested, what you did to those heroes was really horrible and should make you feel guilty. Su Chan. Ochako cried. Aya, she's right. Naruto said quietly but you could hear the weight in his voice. I rarely lose control of my quirk but when I do, bad things happen, I lose consciousness and when I wake up I'd hurt everything and everyone I care about. He gritted his teeth and balled his fists. As a result it I get desolated. He chuckled bitterly. After all, no one wants to associate themselves with a monster who is powerful enough to destroy the village. He looked at Sue with glassy eyes. So yes, I should be punished for what I did but first I want to make things right, at least give me that chance, Dadbeo. Sure. 
Sue shrugged easily surprising everyone in the room. I wasn't trying to antagonize you, Naruto. I just wanted to test you and it seems All Might knew what he was doing to send you here. She said as she laid a finger in her chin. All Might. Everyone said in unison. Wait. How did she? Anyway, it's going to be great working with you, Naruto. Naruto was surprised at the sudden turn of events and watched her leave. Ah. Uh, by the way, we're going to get our provisional licenses soon, so I suggest you and Uchiha-kun join us in preparation. Tenya instructed Naruto who smiled and gave him a thumbs up. I'll do my best. Then it hit Naruto, where was Izuku? He came to the common room thinking he'd see him but then he remembered. Flashback. All Might sat with Naruto as they enjoyed the cool night breeze. Naruto was feeding on the candy popsicle with delight. It gave him both happy and sad memories but he treasured them both. He was never going to forget Aero Senen. Say, Toshinori Ojichin. You told me to take care of your student, but isn't that supposed to be your job? You're like his master after all. Toshinori smiled to himself as he looked up at the night sky. Yes, but there is a task I am fulfilling while being young Midoriya's master. I have to make sure all for one never leaves that prison. It's hard for me to watch over both young Midoriya and all for one at the same time. That is why I want you to help me. But I don't want to take your place. All Might chuckled, you won't, Midoriya admires me too much, so much that he is working hard to surpass me one day. Then he said with fondness in his voice, my successor is very hard working. Flashback end. Deku should be training now, right? Naruto said, standing from his seat. Ah, he should be outside by the garden. Lita directed him. Thanks. Naruto said and turned to leave. Wait, you're leaving. Ishido said with a disappointed tone. Yeah, we've got a big day tomorrow. Lazily waved at them, not bothering to look back. Okay, let it spread though my whole body. Izuku said in his thoughts as the energy surged through him before green electricity streamed his body. Taking an attack stance, he jumped and swung his left leg at nothing in particular, creating enough wind pressure to make a nearby tree threaten to release itself from its roots. He exhaled and released his energy. Impressive. He turned towards the source of the voice at the entrance of the garden to see Naruto with a bottle of water in his hand. Yo. Naruto grinned. Naruto. Izuku smiled. He received the bottle of water from Naruto thanks. He said before downing its contents. You're good, ever sparred with anyone before? Well, no one besides Kachan. A memory flash of Bakugo throwing him hard into the ground hit his eyes and he cringed. Okay, so this shouldn't be new to you. Naruto backed up a little and lifted the confrontation seal at Izuku. Izuku was a bit startled and he started waving his arms around, stuttering and backing up himself. His heart skipped when he his back hit something. Turning sharply, he was met with another Naruto. He looked over his shoulder to confirm if Naruto was still where he last saw him and he was still there. There's two of him. Hey, what's up, Datbeo? I I don't know anything about your moves. Izuku admitted and Naruto frowned. If you don't fight cause you don't know anything about your opponent's moves, then you can never be a hero. Izuku gasped in realization and started to get a little disappointed at himself. I don't know about you, but the heroes that attacked me back then had a lot of guts. They tried even when they knew nothing about me. Same thing goes where I come from. I mean, isn't that what your master taught you? Naruto asked as he dispelled the clone. All might. Izuku's guard went up. Wait. How do you? If you can beat me in a spar, then I'll treat you to whatever snack you want during lunchtime. Izuku was surprised at the offer and blushed when he thought about having some katsudan. However, his blush faltered when he saw Naruto's wicked grin. But if I win, you'll have to go find the best ramen Musutafu has to offer, Datbeo. Izuku grinned his own wicked grin back at Naruto as he mirrored his stance. I'm not gonna lose to you. Naruto's grin brightened. I like that, now let's get to it, Datbeo. Orange and green flash clashed together as the two held themselves in a lock. They grinned at each other before Izuku's grin faltered a bit. Oh, we should be careful not to destroy the garden. He said causing Naruto to frown and power down. Are you kidding me? Izuku just shrugged with a sheepish smile before bursting out laughing. Naruto followed suit and they fell to the ground sitting as they held their stomachs. 
You're such a funny kid, why did you agree in the first place? Naruto laughed. Well you kinda scared me. Deku shrugged. And you're pretty strong. You too. Naruto smiled. You're very hard working, reminds me of a friend of mine back at home. He looked up longingly at the night sky. Izuku had noticed and figured that Naruto must miss his home so he decided to make him feel a little better. Oh, what's his quirk? Naruto seemed surprised that he had asked further and grinned holding up his bandaged arm in a muscle pose. He's super strong, Datbeo. Really? Yeah, he was strong enough to split a meteorite in half. Izuku's eyes widened, he hadn't expected that kind of strength. Whoa. You know, he wasn't anything much to talk about back in our academy days. Everyone looked down on him and made fun of him cause he was different. Naruto leaned back on the grass and smiled up at the night sky. But he stood by his dream and never gave up, he worked so much harder than everybody and became who he is today. Izuku had not met this person, but he could see that Naruto was right, they were similar in a way. He too had been looked down on because he was the odd one out, but continuous belief in his dreams and hard work brought him up to this point. Say, Deku. Naruto said still looking up at the stars. Do you have a dream? Izuku sighed before smiling brightly. I want to be a great hero that saves people with a smile, I want to be a greater hero than All Might. Naruto laughed and sat up. You've got a great dream. My dream is to become Hoka Gai and protect my village, Datbeo. Hoka Gai, what's that? It's the title given to the strongest person in the village. They're called, Ka Gai, because they act as a shadow that covers the village and protects it from harm. Izuku looked up at Naruto in interest. What's your reason for becoming Hoka Gai? Naruto's smile faltered and he grinned sheepishly. When I was a kid, I was alone most of the time. Everyone in the village hated me and avoided me like the plague. They kept their children away from me, my name was a taboo. I did everything I could to get their attention, caused trouble, played pranks, you name it. Even though I get in trouble, it's still nice if they at least looked at you and spoke to you. Izuku could see the pain in Naruto's eyes as he spoke. It made him internally wonder how much more Naruto had gone through. So, my reason for becoming Hoka Guy was to gain respect and acknowledgement, but as time passed, I met a lot of people that helped change my view of things. One wise one told me, you don't become the Hoka Guy to be acknowledged by everyone. The one who is acknowledged by everyone becomes the Hoka Guy. Those words changed me, and I realized what had pushed me to my current strength. It was the conscious support of the people who acknowledged me and my strong will to always protect them. So my drive for being Hoka Guy is to protect the ones I care about, my village. Naruto grinned at Izuku as he stared at him. Tell you what, Deku. When you become the number one hero, I'll make sure to be there to cheer you on on one of your saves. Izuku felt happiness fill his entire being. With a large grin and a determined look on his face, he said, and I'll make sure to come by to your village to congratulate you when you become Hoka Guy. They both grinned at each other and held their fists high. I'm gonna go beyond, plus ultra. You better believe it, Datbeo. Bakugo had been watching that night as Naruto bonded with Midoriya. That guy was something else, he just met Izuku and they were practically buddies now. It disgusted him, how could someone who had caused damage to their city be trusted? What was the Hero League thinking? What was All Might thinking? What if they were villains undercover, working for all of one? It was only natural for him to be suspicious of them after his recent kidnapping but he knew even though that was not so, he would still find them untrustworthy. It was just in his nature. He didn't know what they were planning next, it made shivers run down his spine but he'd never admit it to anyone that he was scared. That's because he doesn't want to be like everyone else, he was special that's what he kept telling himself and what he had grown up believing. His heart skipped once he noticed that Blondie and Deku were nowhere to be found outside. That bastard. He gritted his teeth and was ready to bolt out his door to go after them when the sound of hearty laughter echoed in the hallway. He was sure one of them belonged to Midoriya and the other was obviously Blondie's since he was with him. But what made the little pebble laugh so much? True he and Deku had a rocky relationship, but he was close enough to him to know that the green runt rarely ever truly laughed or was it just his imagination. Either this guy must have really bonded with Deku for him to laugh like that or he was just very funny, 
but Bakugo knew better to go with the former, and it made him suspicious of Naruto even more. He waited for their voices to die out as they passed by his door before having a quick peek outside. Naruto sauntered with his arms folded behind his head while Deku clutched his notebook to his belly, staggering a bit in his steps from so much laughing. No matter what that yellow-head bastard or the emo guy did, he'd never trust them. The cool night's breeze was perfect for Sasuke to sit and meditate especially when you find yourself your own private spot on the roof, preventing you from getting disturbed. Tonight had a peaceful catch to it, it let him think. He had left home in the most worrisome way and he just wondered how everyone was doing. Though he kept a calm and relaxed demeanor as usual, inside he felt like he would shatter into different pieces if not careful. He felt more guilt than Naruto for all this. If he had just not returned to the village then that Atsusuki wouldn't have followed him, and Naruto wouldn't have been dragged into it and then they'd never had caused trouble for these people. He looked up at the starry sky and sighed, he just has to cause trouble wherever he goes, huh? I wonder how Sakura is doing. He tilted his head back a little and sighed. The stalker was doing a terrible job at sneaking on him, but what could he say, maybe that was his best he didn't have a right to judge, but he knew that sneaking up on a ninja is just pointless, it was their specialty after all. Just stop the charade and have a seat. He said abruptly causing the stalker's breath to hitch. Shoto had tried to be as quiet as possible but what was the use, stealth was never his thing with his quirk type. Sighing in defeat, he put his hands in his pockets and sauntered over to where the mysterious Uchiha stayed before sitting right next to him, a few meters. He had wanted to talk to the dark-haired genius for a long time. Mostly because he felt drawn to his character and partly because of his prowess. He had taken an interest in him since the first day he saw his left eye and one arm. There were so many things he wanted to ask him but the silence between them was like an obstacle. Yes they had that in common, they wanted to see who'd talk first. It was frustrating. Time seemed to tick by slowly as they sat in silence. Sasuke didn't seem to want to budge and neither did Shoto but what the heck, wasn't he the one who wanted to ask the questions, why did it have to be in his nature to be stubborn? He snapped his head to the direction of a chuckle he thought he heard. He soon confirmed it was indeed from Sasuke judging by the way his shoulders bobbed a bit. Oi. Shoto looked at him clearly and watched him sit up to look directly at him, his purple eyes gleamed in the moonlight. I just felt I had to talk first because I pitied you, if we kept playing this game then you wouldn't have gotten to ask your question and I'd just go to bed leaving you like that. How did you know I wanted to ask you a question? Why else would you be here, to share your cold soba with me? He deadpanned. Shoto didn't want to ask how Sasuke knew he was eating soba recently before coming to stalk him. He had made sure to leave leftovers so he'd come for it later. You're right. Sasuke then looked back up at the sky. So, what's your question? Why do you and Uzumaki have only one arm? Not like Naruto visibly had one arm but he could tell that the bandaged one was prosthetic. A dark brow rose and Sasuke was moved to look at his one arm, holding it in front of his face. It's a long story, but to answer your question, Naruto and I had a bit of a disagreement with each other. Shoto couldn't believe his ears. A disagreement, leading to the loss of one of your arms. It's simple to understand, just like you, you have friends and at one point, you don't see eye to eye so you fight it out. Shoto could now clearly understand that Sasuke was trying not to spill out too many details but gave him his answer nonetheless. I see. Good, now it's my turn. It was Shoto's turn to lift a brow. He hadn't expected the Uchiha to be interested in anything about him and the smoldering gaze he aimed at him left him with no choice. Sighing he signaled for Sasuke to go on. The question, however really surprised the icy hot hero. Why do you have heterochromatic hair and eyes? It was amusing but it was also fair since he had asked him about his arm though he hadn't given him details. He waved that off anyway. I'm the result of a quirk marriage. He looked at Sasuke to see if he had any idea of what he was saying and the Uchiha seemed to be following. My father, created, me out of his spite for the former number one hero, All Might. So my destiny is to surpass him, apparently, that's all I'm good for. He kept me away from my siblings, any form of company and even my mother. His voice cracked at the last thing he said. He was relentless in his training methods. Whenever my mom tried to intervene, he'd hit her. 
Silence hung between the two for a while. Sasuke quietly processed everything the hybrid had told him knowing without a doubt where he and his father's relationship currently stood. Do you hate him? Shoto's silence and bawling of fists answered Sasuke's question in the affirmative. He hummed and tilted his head in thought. Your dad reminds me of a comrade's. They're a bit similar but one was worse. Oh, he's a jerk too. Sasuke scoffed. That is if you mean jerky enough to want your child dead. He could hear Shoto's breath hitch and he hummed. He was, created, to be a killing machine. From what I heard, his dad had tried to kill him six times because he thought his son was getting too powerful and reckless with his powers. He sat up and looked Shoto in the eye. You may have been cursed with a shit dad, but it doesn't mean you'd turn out to be like him. No matter what you do, if your intention is to make him angry, then you're just being a rebellious teenager. What you need is a strong will of your own and someone who can support your will in order to eventually confront him when the time comes. He's still stronger than you are, so for now, focus on surpassing him with your own power until the time comes. With that, he stood to his feet and with his hands in his pockets he sauntered off. I'm heading to bed, maybe next time we can have soba but I like mine hot. Shoto was left alone to ponder on the Uchiha's words. He wasn't surprised that Sasuke could relate, he looked like someone who had gone through greater pain than he has. No one had ever advised him in such a way, he chose to take Sasuke's word to heart, no matter what, he'd surpass his father. The next day, Class 1A students stood in TDL in order to train for their upcoming final examinations where they would get their provisional licenses. Midnight, Ectoplasm, Cementos and Aizawa had explained the training focus. The purpose of this training was to help develop their quirks and produce an ultimate move. Lita of course, had gone ahead to ask what the need of an ultimate move was and since then Midnight had her dark blue eyes on Sasuke Uchiha. Mineta and Kaminari were the only ones who seemed to notice and glared daggers at the dark-haired boy. Uchiha Sasuke, why don't you tell the class what you think an ultimate move is? She said to Sasuke who had received attention from the whole class. Naruto smirked, already knowing the outcome of this. An ultimate move, that should be a flawless attack that cannot be easily countered, giving the opponent a minor win chance. There you have it, Uchiha-kun answered correctly but it mustn't necessarily be all about attacks. Midnight said before winking at him. For example, Lita's recipro burst is good enough to be called an ultimate move. The class representative could not hide how happy he felt about his teacher's comment on his move. From now on you will go through intensive training, and do something about your suits to compensate for the developments of your quirks. Aizawa said before adding. Be very plus ultra about it. Yes sir. Naruto and Sasuke stood watching the students as they trained and developed their quirks. Hey, Naruto. Naruto turned at the sound of the familiar voice and beamed with a smile. Deku, what's up? I just came back from upgrading my suit. He scanned them from head to toe. Where are your suits? They're not ready yet Aizawa Ojichin said they'd be done by tomorrow, Datbeo. Deku laughed a little at the way Naruto had already familiarized with Aizawa sensei, calling him, old man's. He knew the man wouldn't take it well if he ever heard Naruto called him that. So, you've worked on your ultimate move yet? Naruto asked. Yeah, I call it the shoot style. Deku beamed. Aizawa who had been silently watching them had a pleased look on his face. Midoriya seems to have brightened since that time. He's no longer gloomy. The erasure hero looked up at his working classmates. The same could be said for them. He smiled. Katsuki took a calm breath as he focused his explosion on the center of his palm. Then shaping his fingers in an O oh with his other hand, he placed it over the center and released an explosion. This way, it extended and fired at a more lethal frequency, like a bullet. Explosion AP shot. He shouted as the attack created a hole in the wall of his terrain. Izuku, Naruto and Sasuke watched as he laughed maniacally. Say, that guy's really something. Naruto smiled and shot Sasuke a knowing look. Reminds of a 12-year-old you. Sasuke scoffed. That kid's nothing like me. Deku smiled at the two. You know, Kachan. Katsuki's wall cracked at the top corner before dropping debris down to where they stood. Izuku, who had seen it took off into the air with all for one and kicked it, causing it to shatter into many pieces. 
Naruto held a surprised look and then grinned at the green hero as he landed in a graceful bound. So, that's your shoot style. Yeah. Izuku grinned. Nice, Datbeo. Sasuke only made a sound of approval but he was impressed. Hey watch yourselves, you too. Katsuki said in an annoyed tone. Sorry, Kachan. Izuku said back receiving an annoyed grunt in response. Have you guys worked on yours? He asked before Naruto and Sasuke easily dodged ectoplasm and his clones kicked thanks to their amazing reflexes. Do you two plan on standing idly? He asked, unbothered by their impressive reflexes or maybe he was, how would they know, he was always grinning. Every student is to take part in this training. He turned to Izuku. That includes you too, Midoriya. H. Hi. The green-haired boy stuttered before waving bye to the two. Ah, you see, ectopops. Ectopops. I'm not really sure my ultimate move is good for practicing indoors, Datbeo. It is not a problem, this is a superhero training gym anything can happen. Ectoplasm said placidly. Yosh. Naruto punched his palm and looked at Sasuke. Make sure you kick ass with your ultimate move, Sasuke. Don't tell me what to do, loser. Sasuke said and walked away as Naruto shouted obscenities at him. Naruto faced ectoplasm on the terrain Cementos had made for him. He was very excited that ectoplasm's quirk was clones and did a few clones of his own. It only started to get exhausting when he would produce more clones from his mouth. Uzumaki, if you keep going like this, you would become even more tired. Ectoplasm said in an, as a matter of fact, tone. And, to beat me, you'd have to be at full power. That one seemed to tickle Naruto's sense of competition. He stood up straight with a wry smile as the pigmentation of his eyelids changed to orange. I'm not gonna use full power but, you asked for this, Ectopops. Sasuke fought the clones with fluid moves and calculated attacks. It wasn't strange for him to face this many opponents as he had fought more than a thousand of Naruto's shadow clones. His normal eye gleamed red and its aura waved with the light. The students stopped their training temporarily to watch Naruto and Sasuke's fight. Naruto moved at great speed, bulldozing ectoplasm's clones like they were nothing. At a point when Sasuke moved, all you could see was blue lightning. He took hold of one of the clones, hoisted himself up and did a split kick killing two clones that had tried attacking him. Whoa. Ochako muttered. He's moving like he knows their next move. Shoto paused before saying, he's amazing. I need to know how they do this. Izuku was immediately by Shoto and Ochako's side with his notebook causing them to sweat drop. Come on Ectopops, you can do, better. Naruto said as he punched a rock, missing Ectoplasm's clone but caused the rock to shatter into pieces. Ectoplasm's sweat dropped. What have I brought on myself? Sasuke jumped into the air, burning a great number of clones with fireball jutsu. Shoto's interest in the Uchiha only heightened. He watched as the one-handed boy stood on the top of higher ground. An electric surge bursted to life on his fist. It's crackling, the sound of a thousand birds. Sasuke pointed it at the few clones remaining. My ultimate technique. The wind picked up around Naruto as a white ball of energy formed in his hand before it maxed in size. He raised it above his head as it took the shape of a shuriken. My ultimate move he said with a sadistic grin. Look, it's Naruto and he's carrying some shiny spinny thing. Denki said as he squinted his eyes at it. That thing looks dangerous, it's packing a lot of wind. Ajiro said as he shielded his eyes. And the sound. Jiro noted how loud it was. Sasuke lifted his arm to the sky. Kirin. He called and a lightning dragon flew down from the sky destroying both the clones, the terrain and a good part of the gym. Wind style, Rosin Shuriken. Naruto shouted as he threw the wind jutsu like a frisbee at ectoplasm's clones, jumping out of the way when it started to increase in size after making impact. It destroyed the gym as much as Sasuke's attack did. The students and teachers now stared at the open sky and the demolished gym. Whoa. The hell just happened. I think I now understand what he meant by not being suitable for indoors. Naruto stood grinning with his hands folded behind his head. How was that, ectopops? Aizawa scowled ectoplasm's way and he avoided his gaze. Vlad and Class 1B approached Aizawa a few moments later, not seeming to notice the destruction due to his eager competitive spirit with Class 1A. Aizawa, it's time for Class B to use the gym. You and your students should leave. 
You can have it. Aizawa deadpanned and walked away from the site, they still had 10 minutes left but what was the use? Before Vlad could say anything, Kendo tapped him on the arm and showed him the now destroyed gym. What? A soft nervous laugh shifted Class 1B's attention to a tall blonde boy. Who was rubbing his occiput and grinning. Ah, Goman, Sasuke and I were training so this happens happened. He laughed heartily as Class 1B girls swooned over him immediately. Don't worry. He winked and gave Ectoplasm a thumbs up. This is a superhero gym and anything can happen. Ectoplasm secretly wished to get buried underground. Katsuki's blood boiled in anger at the same time his heart rampaged in fear. These guys were bad news. Sasuke sighed after walking out of his room. After taking a nice bath, he had his mind set on going to the roof. Maybe he'd see Shoto again. He scoffed, what was this now? He was suddenly starting to seek company other than Naruto and his close friends. Was it age? He was about to round the corner when he came face to face with glasses. Ah. Shit. Uchiha-san, where are you headed? The common room is this way. He said and grabbed him by his one arm, pulling him in the direction of the common room and not giving him a chance to speak. They arrived the room together and everyone in class, except Katsuki plus Naruto were present. Blue eyes beamed brightly at him. Sasuke. Sasuke sighed. Don't make things worse, Dobi. He put his hand in his pocket and sauntered over to a seat opposite Naruto's. Come on Sasuke, what's so wrong with meeting other people? Naruto said waving Sasuke's insult off. Hey, say hi to your classmates, you haven't even spoken to one of them. Shoto and Sasuke wanted to say something but decided against it. Sasuke, looked up at the teenagers and gave them a flat, hi, but it was more than enough for them to beam at him. Hi, they said back. He couldn't help but smirk, they reminded him so much of everyone back home. Hey, Lady Steeler, what gives? You just had to be so handsome that you could attract Midnight Sensei. Lita scooped him up by the cheeks to shush him. I apologize for his actions. Hey Naruto, you and Sasuke were in the principal's office. Did things go well? Sue asked. Oh that. Naruto smiled nervously. He was really mad and he told us to change our moves since they were too. Um, what was that word he used again? Catastrophic. Yeah, yeah, that one. So what are you guys gonna do? We're gonna stick to the base form of those attacks, those should do. He shrugged. Base forms. Izuku asked. You're saying they had base forms? Yeah. Naruto placed his hand out. My Rosin Shuriken was just a Rasengan. The wind picked up as a blue spinning energy ball formed in Naruto's hand. Everyone looked in awe while Izuku took down notes. That must have taken a lot of training. Oh hell yeah it did. Naruto said as he deactivated his Rasengan. Huh, how did you hear me? Izuku asked. Naruto looked confused. You said it took a lot of training and I said, hell yeah, or was I hearing things then? Izuku blushed as his classmates laughed at his bad habit of muttering his thoughts out loud. You said your suits are coming in tomorrow, right? I wonder how cool they'd look with the gadgets and stuff. Denki gushed. Gadgets. Naruto looked lost. They mean the support tools, moron. Sasuke groaned. Oh those, we told Aizawa Ojichin that we didn't need them. What? Naruto flinched. What? But without the gadgets, you couldn't use your powers properly. Lita said with his usual arm signals. I dunno, Sasuke and I have been using our powers without support tools our whole lives. The class stared in awe at them. Well, I did need my own support tools, if anyone here needs them it's me. Denki admitted. Yeah, your quirk practically zaps you along with your opponent, it's funny. Jiro said and laughed while the yellow head yelled obscenities at her. Yeah, you should see him when he gets zapped he's like, a Jiro held out his thumbs, crossed his eyes and hung out his tongue making everyone one laugh. Your quirk has a side effect, Sasuke said causing everyone to look his way. Try focusing on developing your control over it instead of relying so much on the support tools. Sure, if I had someone who could help me. Sasuke can help, he's the best lightning user I know. Naruto chirped. Yeah, that move from earlier. Denki beamed referring to Kirin. The lightning dragon thing. You mean Kirin? Yeah, can you teach me that? Sasuke was shocked but didn't show it. 
Not that it was impossible for him to teach him or anything, to get perform, Kiran, you didn't necessarily need chakra but it required apt focus and excellent lightning control but he hadn't expected to start training anyone yet. I'll think about it. Is that a yes? I said I'll think about it. Denki whooped and cheered anyway and Naruto grinned making Sasuke scoff. Idiots. Ishido then smiled mischievously at Naruto until he met her gaze. Naruto-kun, do you have a girlfriend? Naruto, who had not expected that question, blushed and smiled nervously causing the girls to, ooh, at him. Your expression answers my question. She chimed. What's she like? Come on, tell us. Ochako said impatiently. Naruto chuckled and relaxed. She's kind and smart, a great cook and. She's strong, Datbeo. Oh, what is her quirk? Hagakuri asked. She's got special eyes. He gestured to his eyes. It helps her see things from really far away and even far behind her. She's got no blind spots. Are you saying she can see through things? Mineta asked with wide eyes. My, what a great quirk to have. Sato smacked Mineta's cheeks shut. Yeah, she can see through anything, Datbeo. Plus, she's really good at martial arts, one hit from her and you're out. Naruto smiled at a memory. She hit me once and everyone said I was out for a day and a half. Wow, she must be strong. Sato mumbled. So many new things to note down. Izuku muttered. Naruto she was your first kiss, right? Sue asked and Naruto paled. Oh come on, a guy as good looking as Naruto, would have kissed a lot of girls before his girlfriend, she might not even be his fourth. Ishido stated confidently much to Naruto's heightened anxiety. How could she be so accurate? Come on Naruto, tell us. Who was it? When Naruto didn't seem to budge, Ochako suddenly had an idea. Hey Naruto, one of my quirks is mind reading, you know. Naruto jerked and suddenly started blurting everything out. It wasn't Sasuke, I swear. Ha. So it was Sasuke. Wait. The whole class screamed in realization, part surprise, part amusement and part disgust. Sasuke groaned. You idiot, how can you just be fooled that easily? He watched as Naruto gagged. So, your second kiss? Ajiro asked, looking amused. Don't tell me it was Sasuke again. It was an accident. He screeched and gagged. Stop being so dramatic, Sasuke said, unnerved but inside he felt like crawling under a rock. So your girlfriend should be your sixth. Wow. You're a scorer give me tips. Denki smirked. Do you have a girlfriend, Sasuke-kun? Ishido asked. The dark-haired boy didn't answer straight away. He waited a few moments. No. Everyone gasped. Except Sue. She shrugged. I expected it, he's a bit like Todoroki. Uzumaki Naruto. A familiar grave voice turned Naruto's attention to a muscular blonde boy. Ah, Bakugo. Bakugo pointed at him and scowled deeply. Tomorrow at combat training, I want you to fight me, got it. His red eyes turned to Sasuke's dark one. You too, Uchiha. I'll get you after I crush him. Sasuke just looked at him blankly which seemed to irritate him. He growled and turned away. Just be ready to get your ass beat tomorrow. Naruto watched as he walked away. That's Bakugo Katsuki, the strongest in our class. Su said and Naruto hummed. He was able to beat Todoroki and even recently, Midoriya. Naruto gazed at Izuku's withdrawn look for a while. I'll fight him. He said surprising everyone a bit. Sasuke gave him a side glance he had an idea or two of Naruto's true intentions. I always like a challenge. He stood to his feet. I'm gonna beat Bakugo. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video, if you do please leave a like share and subscribe.